Good afternoon, everybody. Are we uh, good to go? Yep, yep. What I would like to do is just make a general opening statement. After that, happy to take uh, questions on the issue. Okay. All right. Well, this morning the CM the uh, QPS received a copy of the CMC's uh, Taser evaluation report. We welcome the report and we welcome the CMC's interest in this matter. The report. Uh, is an example of the ongoing collaboration between both of the agencies into TASER usage, policy, training and deployment. As acknowledged in the report itself, uh, the CMC could not have completed the report as comprehensively without the support and assistance of a range of QPS officers. Um, you would probably remember that in 2009 there was also a joint uh, response by both of the agencies to emerging issues. And that, as a result of that collaboration, we had a range of training and policy initiatives that were implemented throughout 2010. So in consultation with the CMC, the QPS approved the implementation of a revised policy and training package. That resumed mid-2010 and has been ongoing since then. As a result of that, the ratio of officers who have been trained has continued to grow, but there was no uh, accompanying increase in the number of weapons that were available for deployment. So as a result, the QPS has recently placed an order to purchase further tasers. This is to ensure that all taser trained officers have the opportunity to carry the weapon whilst operationally deployed. We came to the view that the, un the unavailability of uh, the weapon to staff who were trained placed an unacceptable risk both to the community and to the safety of those officers. Uh, both the chairman of the CMC and the state coroner were advised of our intention to uh, purchase further tasers. So as a result we've ordered an additional 1,030 tasers. Uh, 830 of those will be operationally deployed across the state based on a needs assessment and the other 200 will be used as part of our ongoing and enhanced training regime. We consider TASER to be a highly effective use of force option, which has so far prevented 281 people from either committing suicide or serious self-harm, and has significantly reduced the incidence of serious assault on police. Given that on about 76% of occasions, the mere production of the weapon is sufficient to peacefully resolve a situation, shows how effective they are in de-escalating potentially violent situations. Uh, happy to take questions. How many tasers will there be all up deployed across Queensland? Uh, look, that'll be, there'll be well over a thousand deployed uh, across Queensland. The, the most important uh, statistic for us is that every time a trained operational crew is deployed, frontline policing, that one of those officers has access to and carries a taser. Are you essentially doubling the numbers though? Uh, look, uh, I haven't got the exact number, but uh, what we are confident is when we get these additional uh, tasers into use, that throughout Queensland, our officers, whenever they leave the station, will have uh, a weapon available if they've been appropriately trained. And we think by doing that, that is the best way that we can enhance the safety of the public and the safety of our officers. In regards to the concerns that the tasers are being used against mentally ill and physically ill people, what's um, your response to that? Is it better that than guns? Well, I think as I alluded earlier, um, the fact that we have been able to stop, I think it's 281 people from either committing suicide or very serious self-harm uh, is something that we should uh, recognise as a success factor as far as I'm concerned. Sadly, it's often the case that when we have to deploy these weapons, it is often in response to someone who's mentally ill, uh, seriously intoxicated, or otherwise not uh, in, a, in a reasonable state where we can talk rationally with them. So it doesn't surprise me that 
often we have to use the weapon against that class of people and, and that's unfortunate. But what I think would be more unfortunate is if we continue to go to those situations and not have the weapon to use. Because having the weapon, in our view, gives us the greatest chance of potentially ending the situation peacefully or if we can't end it without using the weapon, we can certainly end it without having to use lethal force. And I think everyone wants that. How do you explain that Indigenous people are seven times more likely to be involved in an incident with a taser than non-Indigenous people as set out in the report? Uh, well, the stats show that um, Indigenous people represent about 17% of the total number of deployments that we have. And I would acknowledge that that's uh, above their population base in the community. But can I say that when we use this weapon, we do a risk assessment based on the situation. Our assessment's based on risk, not on race. To us, it's immaterial, the ethnicity of the person who's involved in an incident. All we're concerned about is, does it meet the threshold requirement that we place on our officers? That is, there's a risk of serious injury to either the, the subject person, other members of the community, or the police. But that's extraordinary, doesn't it? Seven times more likely. What, what's going on in those Indigenous communities or in those incidents involving Indigenous people? Well, you know, if you look at some of the risk factors that we would, that officers on the front line would consider, they're things like, is the person, uh, do, do they have a history of violence? Are they armed? Are they under the influence of liquor or a drug? Those sort of risk factors are what is in the mind of our operational officers before they make the decision to draw the taser. As I say, the fact that the person who is on the other side of that risk factor happens to be an Indigenous person is, for, to all intents and purposes, irrelevant for us. We're just dealing with the situation. It's about risk, not about race. The details are highlighted that exactly those concerns, there was needs, a need for better education, that uh, high-risk groups, people have, I'll say, heart disease or something like that, that the officers need to know more about those sort of circumstances and how to deal with them effectively. Is that one reason why this could be happening? Well, that's one of the recommendations that's in the report, and whilst we've only received the report this morning, we haven't had a chance to digest the implications of every single recommendation. Uh, greater education for officers about the risk factors of some of those groups is certainly one of the recommendations, and we'll very carefully consider all of those recommendations, and I'm confident that we'll implement uh, most, if not all. Well, so are you confident that every time a, a taser has been deployed that it's been used appropriately? What I can say is that every time an officer draws the weapon, whether they actually shoot it or not, is subject to a very strict reporting, uh, accountability and oversight uh, regime at the regional level. Those reports are then are overviewed at the region, sent to the Ethical Standards Command and also overviewed by the CMC. There have been some instances where the review of those in incidents have led to the officers getting managerial guidance or retraining, about, but in no occasion has it led to any serious disciplinary issues. So yes, I'm confident that they are being used appropriately. And if they were not being used appropriately, I'm confident that all of the uh, accountability mechanisms are in place to pick that up. How many, incidents are there? How many times does that happen where there's had to be a managerial retraining? Uh, look, it's a handful. I couldn't give you the exact number, but it is literally a handful. How many cases are there of police tasering themselves or each other? Uh, look, we have uh, an accidental discharge of the weapon in the station as part of uh, the checking process before they go on duty. Probably uh, one every couple of weeks, I would guess, around the state. It's just an ongoing training and uh, familiarisation issue for us. No one's been seriously hurt, but it is something obviously we want to eradicate. And I think as the officers become more familiar with the weapon and the procedure, uh, that will lessen over time. What about the concerns with the prolonged discharges? Have you had many sort of complaints about that or has that been brought to your attention within the service? What happens is if the officer has to use the weapon and they have to use more than one cycle, that's recorded on the taser usage form as a multiple deployment. Um, the officer in charge of the station downloads the electronic chip in the weapon and that is then sent off for uh, review and analysis by the significant event review panel. So, and then irrespective of that, every six months, each of the weapons are independently downloaded uh, by this, the OICs of the stations to ensure that there have been no deployments that have uh, not been reported. So I think we have a fairly robust uh, accountability process.
one of the concerns from the CMC that, uh, you know, multiple uses or prolonged uses? Well, obviously, it's not something that anyone wants to see. We don't want to see our officers have to use the weapon, and certainly we don't want to have to see them use it uh, with multiple cycles. Sometimes that's unavoidable because of the operational circumstances, but ideally we would like the mere presentation of the weapon to be sufficient. Where we have to use it, one cycle only, wherever possible, and that is the overwhelming uh, majority. Uh, if there is uh, a multiple deployment, that's very carefully considered in all of the circumstances when it's reviewed by the Significant Event Review Panel. Would you have to respond um, to, to the public about with your employment recommendation? Uh, look, I can't give you a, term, a firm time frame, given that we only got the report uh, mid-morning this morning, but uh, I can give you the undertaking that as soon as possible, we will review and be able to put a position back to the CMC and the public about our response to the report. Any question? Um, yeah, Josh, um, the, some of the examples cited in the report in relation to multiple uses, um, I think one the maximum was, was 13 to one person. Can you detail any more circumstances surrounding that case? Uh, no, I'm not familiar with that specific case, but as I indicated earlier, Every single deployment, singular or multiple, is examined by the Significant Event Review Panel that then comes to the uh, ESC and overviewed by the CMC. So um, that circumstance would have been examined as a use of force option, uh, as, a, as is every other time the weapon is withdrawn from the holster. Would it be the same for the person shot in the head? Beg your pardon? One person was shot in the head. Shot in the head? Well, I'm sure uh, without knowing the circumstances of the case, that was probably an unintended consequence because that's not the training they get. Um, so I'd say if a person uh, was shot in the head, it would have been an accidental uh, discharge in that regard rather than aiming for the body mass, which is what they're taught. Do you know how many investigations are currently underway into misuse? Uh, I'm not aware personally of any. As I indicated earlier, we examine every single one. And if there are issues that arise from that review that require disciplinary action or further training or reacquaintance with the policy, that's done uh, within 72 hours at the regional level. Can anything be done? Um, I see the CMC recommended in 07 there were at risk groups and they wanted police not to um, have those overrepresented. They have been. Um, is there anything you can do about that? Well, as I explained earlier, uh, the premise that we operate on is it's on a risk assessment model, and uh, that's uh, a situation that takes account of the, the whole range of the circumstances that the police officer finds him or herself confronted with, and uh, it's a matter for us about the risk, not about the race of the person, and we have to react to the risk factors that we, that we confront ourselves with. Team, for example, that we use the 13 deployments on one person. Yep. Does that mean that person has been shot 13 times? Uh, look, again, I, I'm not familiar with that actual case, so um, I can't really comment because... Well, maybe, maybe my question more is, uh, you know, if, if it registers that someone has been shot five times, yes. uh, the taser has been used five times, does that mean the person has been shot five times? Uh, if that's what the download indicates and the weapon is in proper working order and there's no evidence to the contrary from the officers or the individual concerned, then we'd have to assume that that data is correct. But th those sorts of things are extremely unusual. Do you have any data that suggests the use of tasers has led to a decrease in certain crimes? Uh, I, we do have evidence that it has led uh, to a very significant decrease in the number of serious assaults on police officers. And I indicated earlier about 281 times it's prevented a, a subject uh, member of the community from either committing suicide or serious self-harm. Can you talk about whether it's led to a decrease in the number of times firearms had to be drawn? Had to be drawn? Uh, well, I think it would be f uh, a fair analogy to say that in the past, before we had access to taser, we would have been confronted with those situations where we now draw a taser as opposed to the other use of force options such as the baton or the capsicum spray. If we've got to the stage where the officers feel such a degree of risk exists that they need to draw the taser, before taser they would have probably drawn their firearm. So the, I think there's a, a fair analogy can be drawn there. 
281 cases, is that over since they've been in effect or is that over what period? Since 1 1 2009 when the weapon was introduced. Yes. Yes. So there's been just over 1,100 uh, deployments of the weapon since that time. Uh, 841 times, or about 76 per cent, the mere uh, production of the weapon has been sufficient to resolve the issue, and obviously 24 per cent of the time uh, we've had to uh, use the weapon. Just to confirm, that's on the 1st of January? 2009. 2009? Yes. Do you have data going right back to when they first came out in 2002? Sorry, well this is when they were introduced in Queensland. Yes, I, I believe they were first used in 2002, weren't they? Uh, well, uh, I don't have data about um, any use by sir. I'm just These are just the figures from the general application across uh, frontline police in general duties. When will the new ones, the thousand extra, arrive? Uh, within the next two months. And that, that's doubling what you've got already, I think? Uh, would be uh, close to that. And I may miss this, but do those... The tasers now go to their standard issue for general duties? To, to appropriately qualified officers, yes. Um, yeah, general duties, traffic, yeah, frontline police who are appropriately trained. The police media may be supplies with the figure of total number of tasers deployed? Yeah, that won't be a problem. And um, is there, in your usage policy, is it more acceptable for a female police officer to use a taser than a male? No, it's, uh, well it essentially gets down again to our threshold assessment by the officer, whether male, female, big, small, depending on the, the size and antecedents and the history of the uh, person confronting them, uh, about is there a risk of serious injury? In, in general, female police officers are physically weaker than males, so is there a policy which allows them to use a taser more readily than a male? No, well, for a start, I'd, I'd dispute that generalisation. There are a number of uh, highly competent female officers who have more than hold their own, but I understand the point you're making. Our policy doesn't differentiate about the gender of the officer, height, weight, age any of that. It simply does that officer believe there is a serious risk of injury to either him or herself, the subject person or other members of the community in the vicinity in that scenario. That's our only test. Is there any breakdown on the gender of those officers deploying them, i.e. by rank, age, gender, region? No, well, I, I don't know whether we've done that work, but essentially, uh, as far as I'm concerned, we're interested in what we do is we examine every individual deployment in its own right and we satisfy ourselves was that an appropriate use of the weapon. And that takes into account all of those circumstances. No one has been dismissed as yet for misuse, uh, using a, a taser inappropriately? No. Do you know how many officers have been disciplined? Uh, look, uh, I don't have uh, the numbers, but I, I know there was a handful who have received uh, further training or managerial guidance, where they, they haven't uh, strictly followed the policy. Thank you very much.